Hey guys, my name is Shai, and in this reading, I am very curious to find out what's going to come out because it is only two o'clock in the afternoon and I've already been down probably about eight rabbit holes today. <laughs> I feel like I have messages and themes and energy and all these different things coming and I don't know which one this video is supposed to be about, right? It's like I could tell, <laughs> I could tell that today was the day for a reading, today was the day for a video for for starseeds and lightworkers and you know anyone who's just tuning into this, but I don't know what messages want to come through. Luckily I don't need to know, that's why I have cards. <laughs> so I'm gonna just be probably silent for a couple of minutes here and get a bunch of cards on the table just to kind of see like what this is about. <laughs> One of the things I was talking about all morning was community or I was using the word the collective and that's the very first card out. For me this is a lesson about participating in the collective. <laughs> I was getting this whole message that for me I need to participate in the collective and the bottom here oh my god so I, I said that I, I that I would be silent for a couple of minutes and I don't even need to because these three cards the very first cards I see this is exactly what I've been talking about all morning um how to describe this in a general way in a way that will encapsulate the essence of it because this is going to be a completely different it might seem different for everybody because everybody is working through this shift in a in a different way like about different things and it might seem like they're completely not related but really there there's like a like a shared essence here so the best i can do is maybe describe to you how i was thinking about this this morning so i had some old friends back from where i used to live message me this morning um asking if they could come to visit and i was kind of thinking like eh, i don't know if i want to bother <laughs> right um and that started me on this whole track thinking how some people, there are some people who are very kind of in their mind, right? They're very mental people and they're, 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 these people can be very, they're, they're like minimalists or ascetics, right? They, they want to just exist in the mental space and these people sometimes can, if they're a rather extreme um polarized expression of this they can really reject the body reject earth energy and and and, it, and and to me this whole thing I can look at this and go okay well these people need to come out of their mind and they need to get into the body they need to stop rejecting or earth they need to stop rejecting their body and they need to get embodied and they need to like enjoy the messiness this the uh the sensory physical world right and I was thinking about how some of these people I've had them say to me Things like, you shouldn't, like, I, I'll say things like, oh, I want to have stuff, like, I want to have nice stuff, uh, I want to have experiences, I, I like to eat good food, um, sometimes I like to do recreational drugs, like, sometimes I, I like to drink beer, right, I like to eat pizza, I like to have sensory experiences in life, right, and I like to go out into the world and experience what the world has to offer. And I've had uh, some of these mind-based people tell me that, you know, I'm just clinging to the physical world and I have to let it all go and I have to be a minimalist and, a, and, and, and an ascetic. Um, and I have really, I have, I have been kind of that, that kind of mental person when I was younger, I was really like that. And I've spent a lot of years kind of coming out of that, coming back into my body, back into the world. And I was kind of thinking like, you know, for a minute there, I was actually kind of getting on my high horse going like, you know, these people, they have this obvious problem. <laughs> like they just need to get out of their minds and into their bodies. Why is this so hard for them to understand? Um, and then I was in a conversation and I basically it suddenly became clear how I was living out, like I have an exact parallel to that, except it's not about the mind versus the body, not for me, not for right now, but I have a different thing going on. For me, it's more of how I, I am like an outsider, right? I'm like an outsider type of person. All my life, I've always felt like an outsider, an alien. I've been ostracized. I've been cast out and I've lived outside of the collective. I've lived outside of society in almost every single way that I, that I could come up with for examples, right? And in every single way that you can be an outsider, like <laughs> that's been me. Um, 
And I'm basically okay with that. I'm okay with that. That's how I like it. And I basically get into this frame of mind saying, I don't need the collective, right? That's why this, I, 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 sometimes I say, I don't need the community, right? Like, what do I need community for? What do I need to hang out with friends for? Why do I need to socialize? And more specifically, sometimes I, I look at the universe and I go, why should I bother participating in the collective? I know, it, sound, it sounds terrible, right? <laughs> um, why should I bother participating in the collective? Why should I bother? Because um, sometimes I feel like I just don't get anything out of this, right? These people, they just drain my energy and it's not enjoyable for me and they, they ridicule me and make fun of me and they suck my energy and what did I get out of that, right? That's a lot of the time how I feel. And so I immediately, like finally I understood, right? I understood, wow, that <laughs> that is just a different type of the same kind of problem, right? So some people are stuck in their mind and they are rejecting the body. Other people like me, I am essentially stuck in this outsider kind of identity and I reject the collective and I refuse to participate in the collective. So some people don't want to participate in physical life and some people don't want to participate in the collective, in community, right? And I'm sure there's more examples of this. There's got to be all kinds of different things, right? That people, like some people don't want to participate in their emotional life. Some people don't want to participate in career, right? Some people don't want to participate in family. You could come out with all kinds of different examples. Um, everybody has something that they just don't want to participate in. That's what this is really about. What don't you want to participate in? And, and why, right? And it might boil down to, I mean, maybe there's some kind of fear, right? Maybe there's some kind of fear. Like when I was thinking about people who are, people who are ascetics, right? Who really reject the physical world and they say, you know, you don't need, you don't need any of this. And, you know, I've had people tell me like, oh, you shouldn't have stuff because then you're just clinging to stuff. You're just clinging to it. Um, and I've, I would always argue with them and say, well, no, because I can have stuff without clinging to it. And I've basically proven that in my life because there's been a lot of times where I've gotten rid of all of my possessions because I had to make a big move or just because I wanted to transform my life. I basically have no problem with dumping a can of gas all over my life and lighting a match and walking off and starting brand new. I have no problem with that. So for me, you know, the clinging thing isn't really an issue because I don't actually cling to physical stuff. I just have it and then I can let it go and it's like no problem, right? But for some people who don't, some people I think are afraid to participate in physical life because they know that they will cling and they're clinging because they're afraid of losing something, right? They're afraid of loss. So sometimes we don't want to participate in things because of a fear. Sometimes we don't want to have stuff because we're afraid of losing stuff. Sometimes we don't want to love because we're afraid of losing love or we're afraid of losing our loved ones. Um, you know, so that really, I really had to sit down and go, why it, Why do I not want to participate in the collective? Well, it's a, it's, it's a fear of, you know, being cast out again, being rejected again, being ostracized again, right? And, you know, this is where you can go, okay, well, it's not all about this fear, right? It's not all about the fear because that that's kind of, I think, the deepest, deepest, deepest kernel of the wound. But of course, it's not only that. I don't want to make this all like, face your fears and heal your wounds because it's not only that there's also this element here of maybe the thing you don't want to participate in maybe it's just boring maybe it's just like why would i bother with that right some some people who are really in their minds and this mind thing i don't mean this in a bad way i just mean that these people are they would basically be happy to be brains in a vat right they're just completely intellectual type of people and that's you know has, there's a lot of good things about that too right but you know those kind of people, they might just look at the physical world. They might look at food. They might look at nature. They might look at games and sports and like anything you can do with your body, even sex, maybe they might look at these things and go, I don't get anything out of that. Like, <laughs> it's not interesting to me, right? Maybe, maybe they eat a pizza and drink a beer and they go, I didn't like that. I didn't get anything out of that. That was boring. So maybe some people literally just don't care to participate in physical life because they just don't get much out of it. Right. Um, it's like me, even when I'm, when I'm socializing, I find my social battery is really, really low. And even if I enjoy myself for the first bit, I get really 
I get tired and I get kind of bored. Um, I mean, I'm also ADHD, so I have trouble, like, um, like typically about, I have like an hour. I can socialize for about an hour and then I start getting bored because like I'm like all over the place, right? I can't maintain my attention for that long and I end up just getting bored. Even if I, even if these are friends that I, I really have a connection with and that I really like and that I respect, I just get bored <laughs> in social situations and I do feel bad about that and I've struggled with that a lot. So it makes me look at community and I just go, Ugh, yeah, I mean, that would be nice and fun and pleasant and all of that, but I would just kind of be bored and I would be thinking about all of these other things and it would be maybe be more fun if I could run off into the wild and do something by myself, right? So the thing that you don't want to participate in, maybe it's just not very interesting to you. Maybe it just feels boring. Maybe there is an underlying fear, but maybe you're just kind of like, eh, why bother, right? So that is essentially what this whole pocket of energy, what this video, what this message is about. Um, right, comes up with regeneration, regeneration. There is an invitation here to take another look at the thing you don't want to participate in. Maybe you could think about why you don't like to participate in it. And then you could ask yourself, could you maybe participate in it a little bit more? <laughs> Could you maybe participate in it a little bit more some of the time, <laughs> right? Now, this doesn't mean that you have to join the country club, right? This doesn't mean that you have to become a hedonist. This doesn't mean that you need to climb the corporate ladder. This doesn't mean you have to settle down and start a family, none of that. It doesn't mean that you have to go all the way into this other energy. But it's like, you will get something out of it if you allow yourself to participate in it. What you get out of it might be very tangential. It might not come directly. Like maybe you have to, you know, if someone doesn't like to go out in nature because they don't like getting dirty and they just don't care about plants, right? Maybe if they went on a nature walk, yes, they'd get dirty. Maybe they wouldn't enjoy it. Maybe it'd be hot. Maybe it'd be cold. Maybe it'd be windy. Maybe they'd find it unpleasant. But maybe when they come home, maybe it'll be even weeks later, they realize that they that they got something from that. Maybe they had some kind of profound realization. <laughs> maybe they fa literally found a phys physical object on the walk. Maybe they met somebody and maybe in some roundabout way, they end up having gotten something out of that walk and they go, wow, if I didn't go for that walk, I wouldn't have this. Same thing, you know, for me, if I know, I know from experience, every time I allow myself to participate in the collective, I do get something out of it. Even if I got kind of restless, even if I go, well, okay, I mean, that was pleasant. Everybody was nice. I had a good time, but like, uh, I maybe could have spent my time better doing something else. N in the long run, I eventually see what I get out of that. Sometimes I get personal growth, right? Sometimes I literally get something. Maybe somebody will literally give me something and I go, wow, I've been looking for this forever. Maybe I found a new place to go have coffee, like a new coffee shop. Um, maybe the whole experience brings me in a really roundabout weird kind of way, like some kind of spiritual breakthrough. Right? So the thing you don't want to participate in, I mean, and maybe sometimes you just get money from it, right? Like if the thing is the thing that you don't want to participate in, maybe the thing is like, economics, right? And maybe you don't want to, you, you don't feel like you should have to work. You don't feel like you should have to pay the rent. You shouldn't have to do any of that because all oh, that's bullshit. But you know, if you participate in having a job or entering the career world where you're actually, you know, like getting involved in like a whole career path, right? Well, you would have monetary goals with that and think of all the things you could do with the money. Maybe you hate working. Maybe you hate, you know, working for the man and having a boss and all of that, but you would at least get the money that then you can do all kinds of things with, right? So it's a very roundabout way, a roundabout way. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and so Riptide Tunnel, course correct. This is really interesting because I was actually thinking about riptides last night. Um, do you guys know about riptides? If you don't live near the ocean, you, you might not you might not know this. So riptides, like, you know, on, on the beach, a lot of t times you'll see a sign saying like dangerous currents, you know, riptides. And people think that riptides are really scary. And I mean, they are scary because people can die in riptides, right? Um, but they get confused with undertow. So it's important to just know the difference between an undertow and a riptide. An undertow, this is the really, really scary stuff. The undertow is when the current will suck you down under the waves and under, and there's nothing you can do. You just, now you're under, 
and that's it, right? A riptide is actually a current that is flowing like parallel to the to the coast, right? Parallel to the beach, parallel to the land. And so if you're swimming out in the ocean and you get caught in a riptide, you're going to get pulled along the shore. And I mean, you might get pulled a little bit out to sea, but it's mostly typically parallel to the shore. And so people get, they get pulled and pulled farther and farther down the beach. And that's when they panic. And then they start trying to swim back to where their beach was, back to where their friends are, back to where they left their shoes and all of that. And they get tired because they're trying to swim against the current. And then they end up getting tired and they drown that way. So if you ever get caught in a riptide, this is, this is the, the advice is let it sweep you away, right? Let it sweep you down the beach. Even if you go past the beach, even if you're going like way to like, you don't even know where you're going, right? You can still see land. There's still land there. So don't try to swim back to where you were. Don't try to swim back to where you started. Just swim carefully and calmly as well as you can towards the land, right? So allow the riptide to just take you along this parallel journey, parallel to the coast, and then just slowly make your way to the land. And it'll be easier to swim out that way because you'll slowly be able to get yourself towards the land. And then you'll make landfall. Then you'll be back on land. And yes, you're going to be like way, way, way down the beach. But then, you know, even if you're barefoot in your swimsuit and you, you don't know where you are, you can ask somebody for help. You can get a phone. You can call people for help. And you'll be fine, right? You, you'll have made it out of the water. And you'll be way somewhere else, right? You'll be way somewhere else. So that, that's what this card is about, right? Riptide tunnel course correct. Course correct. This is the energetic equivalent of a literal riptide. So that that's, I think, why we're being challenged to kind of participate in the thing that we maybe are hesitant to participate in is a little bit like a riptide. We might go, what's the point in this? Like, imagine if you get caught in an actual riptide, you'd be swimming, swimming to the shore, trying to swim to the shore. It'd be kind of slow going. And you'd be like, why, why did this happen? Why am I in this? I'm getting swept so far away. But you don't know what you might find when you finally get to land at this new place that you had never been. It's a course correct. It's taking you somewhere you need to go. And maybe there was just no other good way to get you there. Maybe you would never have gone there. So you needed this riptide energy to just plop you out at some new place. So the thing you don't want to participate in, but if you allow yourself to participate in it, that will be the thing that takes you to where you need to go, even though there's no way to understand what you will find there. You can maybe understand, you know, on an abstract level going, okay, maybe I'll, I'm going to find something, I'll have personal growth, maybe I'll meet somebody, maybe I'll find a physical object, maybe I'll get some money, maybe I'll learn something really important, maybe I'll experience a healing or a spiritual upgrade, right? You can think abstractly about all the things that might be, but you won't really know where you're going to end up. You won't really know what you're going to find there until you get there. So all you can do is allow yourself to participate in this. And for some people, this is participating in earth life, like the physical body, literally participating in their own bodies and the sensory world. For some people, it's participating in community. For some people, it's participating in family or career or maybe academia, right? In, like the intellectual world, whatever you can come up with, right? <laughs> you know what it is the thing that for all of your life like and this is the thing I, I mean maybe maybe for some people this is going to be a short-term type of thing but I think for most of us this is hitting on the thing that all of our life we have never really wanted to participate in that thing that we've always just kind of gone like nah, nah. <laughs> right um, and I do think that the participation, like I was saying before, this doesn't mean you have to join the country club and it doesn't mean you have to start a family, right? Maybe it's participating for an hour or a day or a weekend, maybe a, as long as a month, right? But I don't think it has to be this great big forever thing. This is a temporary energy because you don't stay in the riptide forever, right? You just go on the ride. You're just going on the ride. And then, you know... I think we will see what there is to see. And then next time, next time this energy comes around, right? When you are invited to participate in the thing, you go, okay, last time it really wasn't that bad. Last time I did get quite a bit out of it. And it really wasn't as scary as I thought. It wasn't as bad as I thought. Really, it was okay. <laughs> and maybe, you know, through the course of our life, we will be trained to kind of accept participation 
And then, you know, this is almost like getting a participation ribbon. <laughs> Remember when you were kids and you, everyone would, all the kids would get a participation ribbon? This is kind of like that. Like, everyone's going to get a ribbon. Everyone's going to get something out of participating for this. Because the universe wants us to be participating in the thing, right? Because it's good for us as individuals to participate in the thing. And it's also good for the people you're interacting with. Like, you know... If you have to, if your thing is you don't want to participate in family, right, um, maybe, you know, maybe, okay, sure, maybe for you participating in family is going to be quite uncomfortable, and maybe you're thinking there's no way I'm going to get anything out of this, or even if I do get something out of this, it's not really going to be worth it, right, but maybe your family really needed something from your energy, and of course you're like, well, I don't want them vampirizing on my energy, that's not my problem, <laughs> but, you know, from the universe's mind's eye, right, from the universal point of consciousness sometimes sometimes we do just show up to give something to someone who really needs it right I do think that you know it eventually comes around back to us right you will eventually receive what you lost and receive more for having given it right it does eventually come back around to you but sometimes the universe just would really appreciate it if you would participate just for a moment right just for a moment so that's where I want to leave this. I think that is the gist of this message. Just really know, fit this to your thing, right? It's going to be unique to you. And just remember that, you know, this doesn't mean you have to join the country club. It's you're only being asked to participate with your consent for a temporary moment in time. You are going to get something out of it. It's going to be worth it. You will see, right? You will see.